Welcome. Thanks for joining me. This is rental car number 153, and today I'm driving the 2020 Kia Soul S. I'm uh, pretty excited about this one. I loved the 2019 uh, Kia Soul, so I have a feeling I'm going to like this one too, because it hits all the things I like about small vehicles like this. It's practical, it's got good storage, decent gas mileage, and some fun acceleration. And I'm going to show you all of that. Uh, we're going to start with specs. We'll take it for a test drive. I'll even take it on the highway and really put it through some uh, tough driving conditions. Uh, then I'll give you a tour of the interior, and then I'll close things out at the end by giving it an actual rating. So I hope you'll join me all the way until the end. All right, so let's get started with specs, and don't worry, I'm not going to throw too many numbers at you, but this does have a 2.0-liter inline-four engine and a 2-speed CVT, so a continuously variable transmission. That's actually new on this model. Kicks out a decent amount of horsepower. Remember, this is a small hatchback, but it's 147 horsepower at 6,200 RPM. So not a ton of power, but because it's not a super powerful vehicle, you get some pretty good gas mileage. 27 miles per gallon in the city, 33 on the highway with a combined rating of about 30, which is pretty decent. Uh, that fuel cap is located on the driver's side. That is uh, my personal preference. And the fuel tank takes 14.3 gallons. So what I'm trying to stress with all these numbers is that this is not a super powerful vehicle, but despite the lack of power, it is pretty fun to drive. So uh, let's jump in and take it for a spin together. All right, let's talk about handling at lower speeds. Uh, because of the size of the vehicle, it's actually extremely nice. You can really corner on a dime. Parking is a breeze, and it's super responsive. And what I mean by that is when you turn the steering wheel, uh, you are instantly turning. That might sound a little bit strange, but it's, it's not true of every vehicle. Sometimes when you turn the steering wheel a little bit, it takes a second for the car to respond, but not with the sole. It's just really, really crisp, which I love because it makes just maneuvering around parking lots and things like that super easy. Handling at higher speeds is a, a little bit different. Let me uh, jump out on the road right here and let's take a spin together. So when you're up to about 30, 35, doing gentle curves like this isn't a problem at all. You feel super comfortable, but for me, when I get up to about 45 or so, let's pass this plumbing guy. Um, I don't know, I feel like I'm gonna start slipping just a little bit. Uh, it doesn't feel like the car can do much more than 45 around gentle curves like this. Still pretty fun though. I mean, I have no problem hugging that crease between the blacktop and the curb. Uh, let me show you a U-turn real quick because the turning radius is really sharp, so it's no problem to stay in the lane going around that median. So handling at low speeds is exceptional. Handling at higher speeds is, you know, it's pretty good, um, but it's not a sports car. So just keep that in mind if this is something you're considering. And let's do a, an acceleration test. See if we can get to a place where we're not gonna bother anybody. So let me hang another U-turn. We'll come to a dead stop and I'll floor it and we'll see how the engine sounds. So, dead stop, here we go. Not bad. I like the growl um, and it's fairly responsive. So when I floored the accelerator, it did take a, a heartbeat or two before I really feel like I was rocketing forward. Uh, but other than that, acceleration is decent. Let's, uh, let's try accelerating while we're moving. So we're at about 40 miles an hour now. Let me slam down on the accelerator. Yeah, takes, takes a heartbeat or two, maybe a second, second and a half before the, the car responds, but that's not too bad. One other thing I like to look at is cabin noise. Really what I'm concerned about is, can I hear the radio and whatever I'm listening to? over my cell phone. So I actually don't know what radio station this is set to, but I'm gonna get up to about 40, so a decent speed, and let's turn on the radio and see if we can hear the words being spoken. Corroded by 
pipes and get brand new bags or cup. So it's not bad. I mean, you can definitely hear the wind kind of going around the vehicle, uh, but I can make out what's being said over the radio, and that was at a really, really low volume. So it uh, seems like cabin noise is pretty decent on this vehicle. At higher speeds, though, uh, it's a little bit iffy. All right, so let's test out acceleration. I'm flooring it right now. Sounds nice. Takes a little bit to get up to 60, but that's to be expected on a vehicle at this price point, especially at this size. Uh, we're going about 70. What I like to see, though, is uh, can we get a burst of speed when we need it? So can we pass, you know, one of these trucks up here fairly easily? So we're at 72. I'm going to change lanes and floor it. Oh, wow. So we still can get some decent speed when we're going uh, fairly fast. Let's see if we can get around these two semis. Not bad. So we're going about 90 right now. I'm going to slow down soon so I avoid any speeding tickets, but fairly happy with the acceleration. Handling at higher speeds, uh, I'm not going to lie. I feel the car shaking a little bit. I think this is probably the limit. Wouldn't want to go too much faster than this. Uh, let's slow down a bit. So I'm driving home and I just had to share something. Uh, so on the Kia Soul, they have lane departure assistant technology. Uh, typically on the rentals I've driven, you have to have cruise activated and the vehicle has to have adaptive cruise for the lane departure assistant technology to actually steer for you. Uh, but that's not the case on the Soul. So I don't have cruise activated, I'm just cruising along and I don't have my hands on the steering wheel at all. The car is actually steering for me. Watch, we're going to go through um, a curve right here. Here's my hand. I'm holding my cell with the other. Going into the sun, too. And look, the car is steering for me around this bend. That is just wild, especially for a car at this price point. Um, I guess the future's really here. All right, so we jumped in the front seat. Let's start by taking a quick look at the key fob. Uh, key has redesigned their fob. Used to be that the buttons were right here on top, but now they're on the side. So lock, unlock, hatch release, and a panic button right there. Also this little silver button right there flips out the key. So let's turn on the vehicle. Pretty nice steering wheel setup. Over here on the left-hand side, we have a mode and a track change button to interact with the system right here on the big screen. Also, volume controls and buttons to answer and hang up phone calls if you connect your phone via Bluetooth. And then down here, you have your virtual assistant technology button, but let's press it right now. It only uh, works if you uh, hook up your phone via Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. On the right-hand side, we have our cruise controls and then a small menu button right here. And that interacts with the gauge cluster up here. Let me uh, show you a couple of screens. Nothing groundbreaking here, but you know, there is some stuff to play around with. So in the center menu, you have uh, lane, your, well, they call it the lane keeping assistant, but your lane departure warning screen. Attention level, so they can show you when you took your last break, and then tire pressure. So that's the screen up here in the center. I adjusted the menu one over, so now we're in the uh, the basic settings screen, which is actually really nice. They organized this really well to make it easy to turn on and off features. And then you have your drive info screen. So you can do things like a digital speedometer. You can see uh, information about your trip, information about the vehicle uh, itself, and then a fuel economy screen. And then at the very top, well, I guess you'd say the bottom, we're back to the digital speedometer. And then park, right? We're in park. 42 degrees outside right now, it's pretty cold. And then your odometer right here, and then miles to empty up top. Otherwise, we have a nice dial right here for RPMs, speedometer, and fuel gauge right here on the right-hand side. So overall, pretty attractive gauge cluster. You know, the rest of the stuff here is pretty standard, but let me show you real quick. Window controls and uh, mirror controls right here. Nice silver door latch with a door lock right here. And then kind of a nice styling right here. I like this quite a bit. I think it's kind of attractive. And you get it on that side as well. 
over here on the dash, a button to change how bright the display is in the gauge cluster. You have your uh, blindside detection lane uh, departure warning right here. Auto on off right here. So when you bring the car to a stop, it's going to automatically turn off the engine unless you have this activated uh, to save just a little bit of fuel economy. And then your traction control right here. Down below on the floor, just a little lever to release the fuel cap. Same lever style to release uh, the hood. Up top, pretty standard stuff, just simple controls to adjust the lights, a sunglass holder right there, and then a standard rear view mirror with a toggle switch. Down below there is where things get a little bit more interesting. You have your touch screen. Nice display with kind of a blacked out look. Dedicated menu buttons on the left and right side. Uh, let's go to the home screen. I can show you if you're connected via Bluetooth or USB and what you're playing over the entertainment features. You also get date and time up above. Not a whole lot of mind-blowing stuff here, which is actually okay with me. I don't like my center displays to be super complicated, uh, but you do have easy access to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and a voice memo app, which I found uh, kind of interesting. And also a pretty simple setup screen, so if you do want to connect something or change something, it's really easy. So nice colors, good size display, and then you also get a rear view camera. So if you do shift the car into reverse, rear view camera pops up with some guides to show you where you're going. And then when you do turn the steering wheel itself, you see that those guides move to show you exactly where you're uh, driving the vehicle. So that's always helpful. So good screen, easy to use. Down below, we have some pretty simple climate controls. That's the way I like them. With rubber linings on the top of these dials to make it really easy to grip. And pretty simple setup. Temperature, fan, and then direction of the fans are blowing. You know, whether the air is gonna be vented in or outside the vehicle, and then AC in your rear defroster. Down below there, we have a nice storage cutout right here. It's pretty perfect for a cell phone. Mine fits perfectly. Below there, we have three power ports. Right, you'll need an adapter for those two, and then a USB port that can charge as well. And then this area right here has a rubber lining on it that pulls up really easily, which is great if you want to keep the car clean. Gear shift with a nice red LED down here and sport shift capability, so you can pop that gear shift over to the left and then shift those gears manually if you like doing that. Drive mode button right here pops up. A little window up here in the gauge cluster to shift between normal and sport mode. I didn't notice a huge difference between the two, but still, you can play around with it if you like. Handle parking brake, which is always one of my favorites. Two cup holders, and then a small storage cutout right here. With a felt lining on below, and uh, you know, no USB or power port down there. But still, you get a nice size storage area, which is always helpful. All right, jump to the passenger seat. Fairly comfortable seat. We have a nice size glove box right here with plenty of room to keep all your stuff. And then pretty standard stuff, right? We've got a vent, window controls, door locks, door latch, manual door lock, and then a nice side view mirror. I brushed past this before, but there is blind side detection on this vehicle. You'll see a little icon up there in the upper right hand corner, upper left hand in the driver's side, and that will illuminate in a soft orange color if someone is your blind spot. It's always uh, helpful to have, and it's becoming standard on more and more vehicles now. All right, I jumped in the back seat. This driver's seat is pushed back all the way, and despite that, I still have plenty of leg room, maybe three inches between my knees and the back of that seat, which is great. Not a ton of amenities back here, but a fairly comfortable seat, and despite being six feet tall, you know, I still have some headroom so that's pretty nice no uh, pockets on the back of these seats just kind of a plastic covering which I have a love-hate relationship with they do scratch a little bit but they certainly make it easier to, to clean nothing on the back of the center armrest no pockets over here as well and then no center armrest either that folds down just a simple seats fairly comfortable and car seat anchors it's really the last thing I want to look at you got the icon right here, and you know, it takes a little bit of manipulating to get access to, but can you see them right there? They're about an inch in, so it won't be too hard to connect a car seat, but uh, not as easy as I would like. All right, so let's close things out by opening up the hatch and taking a look at the storage space back here. 
it's uh, actually a decent amount of room, uh, enough for suitcases, groceries, odds and ends, you know, your typical daily stuff, which is great. And underneath the floor of this area, there is a spare tire, which is fantastic. Actually, a bunch of the Kias I've been driving lately don't have a spare, so this is a big thumbs up in my book. Also, those, uh, those seats do fold down if you need more storage. It's actually really simple. You can do it just by pulling up on these little tabs right here, and then the seats fold forward almost effortlessly. Uh, and then you have more storage space back here if you need to haul around larger items. And it looks like my rental might be missing a piece because you see these little grooves right here? Looks like some sort of uh, privacy screen or something might go down right here and then you can create a flatter surface across the entire rear of the vehicle to store larger items. So uh, that's, that's a good thing. So I guess this is my long-winded way of saying, uh, you know, it's a hatchback. So it has practical, easy-to-use storage, which is always, always a good thing in my book. All right, so that's pretty much everything end-to-end -end on the 2020 Kia Soul S. I, I gotta say, I like this little car. Um, I'd actually consider buying one of these, which I don't say that often. So you are not going to be surprised that I'm going to give this one five stars. Look. It's not a perfect vehicle, but I really don't have anything to complain about. It's uh, practical. It's got good storage, decent gas mileage, nice technology. Uh, it's fun to drive. Um, what else do you want? I, look, I fully realize that not everyone is going to be a fan of a vehicle like this, but for a small hatchback, I love this one. Anyway, that's just my opinion. If you think differently, please leave me a comment below. I love, love hearing from you. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you join me next time when I'm back reviewing another rental car. I'll see you then.